The third of four scheduled days of impact statements in what has been an emotional, dramatic, and revealing sentencing hearing for Larry Nassar. He's accused by more than 150 women athletes of sexual assault under the guise of medical treatment. And most remarkably today was this confrontation between Judge Rosemary Aquilino and the defendant, who had written a letter last night. He was unhappy with having to sit and be confronted by the women he has sexually assaulted. You may find it harsh that you are here listening, but nothing is as harsh as what your victims endured for thousands of hours at your hands. Spending four or five days listening to them is significantly minor considering the hours of pleasure you had at their expense and ruining their lives. Writing this mumbo jumbo, it doesn't help you, sir. The judge visibly angry at the defendant. John Barr is in the courtroom. This was riveting stuff. Yeah, Bob, uh, Larry Nasser told the judge he wrote that before he came here, presumably meaning before the first day of testimony, saying it was cathartic and it was also a cry for community mental health, which are the psychological and psychiatric services available to inmates at taxpayer expense. So he clearly was trying to communicate to the court that he didn't think he was mentally stable enough to sit here and listen to the women. But the judge, as you just heard, laid into him and said, uh, he wasn't doing himself any favors by trying to make those points. And she continues to make it clear, I think, where we're headed when we do finally hear the sentence being pronounced. That's right, yeah. More than once she has intimated that uh, Larry Nasser will die in prison, spend the rest of his life in prison. He's already been sentenced, of course, to 60 years in his federal child pornography case. Uh, but it, it's abundantly clear that she will hand down a sentence which will ensure that he will never get out of prison. All right, now yesterday, during a break in court, there was an opportunity for reporters to speak with the president of Michigan State University, Luanna Simon. And yesterday, of course, OTL reported that at least four MSU athletes reported Nassar's abuse to coaches or trainers in the 1990s. The focus of the attention should be on the people who are telling their story and not on me or Michigan State. Well, this has been a distraction for over 20 years now, so that means absolutely nothing to us, just so you know. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, and there's sure a, a and. And I hear you, I heard your story, and we'll continue to hear your story. Mm -hmm. I would like you to come listen to me. Believe it when I see it. Lindsay Lemke confronted Simon yesterday and roundly criticized her today during her impact statement to the court. You, Luanna, will never be half the person I have become or as all of these women who have had to deal with Larry Nassar. You will never be as strong and you will never be as brave. Instead, you come to court and sit in the back row after being called out on social media for not being here. When put in front of the cameras, you show no emotion. You have no answers. When asked to be here for a survivor's statement today, you stated that you are too busy to fit it in your schedule. Well, Luanna Simon, I can assure you, none of us had the time in our schedules for the past five to 20 years for Larry Nassar to abuse us. Uh, John, you were there yesterday, you were there today. Take us back to yesterday. You were standing right there during that confrontation during the break. Well, Lindsay Lemke, for those who don't know, was a gymnast at Michigan State University. She was abused by Larry Nassar, she says, hundreds of times. Uh, and she chron chronicled that in her statement to the court today. Uh, what she was essentially saying to President Simon was, where's the money to help people like us? I, I needed counseling a year and a half ago. They've set up a separate fund to help victims who need counseling. And Luanna Simon did assure her that that fund would cover past expenses. But there's a lot of anger. And, and that was, that's really been evident these last few days. And, and this morning, uh, the, the sentencing hearing actually took on the field more of a rally for survivors uh, than a sentencing hearing. Um, and when Lindsay Lemke was finished speaking today, she was greeted with applause by those in the, in the courtroom. And you don't typically see that in a courtroom. Yeah, applause which drove her to tears. Uh, tears, I think, of at that moment, a moment of surprise. And she originally did not intend to read a statement. Originally, her statement had been read for her yesterday. But we have seen, and what, an, a number of other women have come forward since Tuesday, since this hearing began, emboldened by the courage they see by other survivors. That's right. In initially, this started out as 88 women. The number then rose to 92. This morning, uh, the uh, representatives from the Attorney General's Office who are prosecuting this case uh, revealed that it's now up to 105 women 
who want to come forward either themselves or through advocates to confront Larry Nassar directly. And as the judge made clear, he's going to sit there and he's going to listen. It's the largest known case of its type. They're trying to get this uh, through the record by the end of the day Friday. At this point, though, what's your best guess? Seems unlikely to me, just based on the pace, the number of women who are speaking every day. Uh, they're now up to 54 to try to get up to 105 by tomorrow. Uh, they're going to really have to rapidly move through the remaining statements. The judge has made it clear she wants to give these women as much time as they feel they need to say whatever they want to say. Uh, so, yes, it could be tomorrow. But I think it's more likely to bleed into next week, Bob, at this point. Incredible scenes of uh, drama and courage, especially uh, those women, dozens of them stepping to the microphone to speak. John Barr, thank you so very much. Appreciate it.